good job it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out sasha banks removed and erased from wwe undertaker teasing a return rhea ripley's heart and other wrestling news i know things have been going crazy over the weekend with the whole sasha banks supposedly being removed from the wwe roster i'm not sure we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support on the channel man road to 90k and um uh, let's do this now what is going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including sasha banks being erased from wwe the undertaker not ruling out a return backstage news on vince mcmahon rhea ripley wearing a heart monitor mm. and much more be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists also check out wrestlemania.co.uk and our non wrestling channel incredible and now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story <laughs> Now our first story today looks at Sasha Banks being erased from WWE. Our top story today looks at the current situation with Sasha Banks and how it appears that WWE are attempting to erase her from the company. We know that Banks along with Naomi have been removed from WWE's internal roster and all their merchandise has been pulled from WWE's shop. Yeah. A further update is that WWE fans had the option of setting their profile picture as Banks on the Peacock platform, but this is no longer a possibility. Damn. This clearly comes from a direct mandate from WWE to erase Banks from any marketing material, and if WWE are going to go as far as removing profile pictures, it just goes to show how damaging the relationship between the two sides has become. Yeah. Banks has also been edited out of the top 10 videos on WWE's YouTube channel. Banks along with Naomi walked out of the WWE back in May and they haven't appeared on WWE programming since. WWE vacated the women's tag team titles and proceeded to promote a tournament for the vacant titles. So far there's been no news on the tournament and fans are under the impression that any plans to hold said tournament have been indefinitely cancelled. Good, it let those titles die because they don't have enough people to, to really have a tag team, women's tag team division anyway. So. Looks like there's no going back for WWE and Banks and they're officially trying to erase her legacy in WWE. What do you guys make of this story? Let us know in the comments down below. See, I know you guys been wanting me to kind of report and I, oh they finally let them go. <clears throat> I, I didn't want to report it because I wasn't sure how true it was. It still looks like maybe she, they're still probably under contract with them, but they're not doing anything with them. So, I mean, it, they're pretty much out the door, honestly. They, they're they definitely out the door, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I'm not sure when her contract ends, so let me know. I'm sure when you guys know when uh, Sasha and Naomi's contracts are so actually supposed to end, if you do know. But... Yeah, once they start removing you from like the like your like your face on Peacock or whatnot, because you can choose which wrestler face you want. And Sasha Banks was on there. Once they start doing that and your merch and all this other stuff, it's wraps. I guess it, it whatever. I'm sure there there have been talks, but I don't think it's reconcilable. So I don't know. Will Sasha Banks go to AEW? That would be an interesting thing. Could that women's division definitely use? Sasha Bank, possibly so, but I don't know, man. I, I don't want her to potentially get lost in the shuffle there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And the same thing with Naomi. Do they continue wrestle, wrestling? Do they retire? Who knows? So we will see how things play out for the remainder of this year, man. But I'm wishing the best for them. I know some people are like, oh, they're entitled. Screw them. But at the end of the day, they're passionate about, they're very passionate about how they feel their characters should go. They love wrestling. You can tell they love wrestling. So I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, oh, I'm glad that they got let go or whatever the situation they're going through. Because when you love something as much as they do and you're just frustrated with what's going on behind the scenes, it kind of sucks when the things that they envision being and now when, it, when reality hits and they're actually doing what they – probably wanted to do since they were little children it doesn't turn out to be what they thought it would you know so they, it's just kind of a sucky situation next up naomi hints at wwe departure mm. now, in relation to naomi not much has been said in relation to her situation however it looks like naomi's also standing her ground last night naomi took to instagram to post a quote to her story which was a clear reference to the current situation with wwe the quote read, The moment you put a stop to people taking advantage of you and disrespecting you is when they define you as difficult, selfish, or crazy. Mm. Manipulators hate boundaries. 
But this likely explains mm. how Naomi feels about WWE, and if this is indeed the case, Naomi looks to have a huge grievance against WWE, and a return in the near future seems very unlikely. Yeah. Next up, the under. Definitely, it, I can see them maybe going to AEW or whatnot, but yeah, bro. The Naomi and Sasha train has left the station, and they they're not coming back. I I just don't see it. Take not ruling out a WWE return. Oh boy, speaking about returns, <laughs> well, The Undertaker is widely regarded as being the greatest character in the history of WWE, and Without he rightfully took his place in the WWE Hall of Fame this year. The Dead Man would have his last official match at WrestleMania 36 in an acclaimed Boneyard match Which against AJ very Styles. Fun. Very, Whilst very most fun. fans were completely satisfied with this being The Undertaker's final match, some fans wanted to see The Dead Man perform in front of a crowd mm -hmm. for his retirement match. Rumors of The Undertaker possibly having one more match were fueled during the Phenom's Hall of Fame speech when he stated a never say never in relation to stepping back into the ring one final time. Taker was recently asked about this never say never comment during an interview with Bleacher Report. During the interview, The Undertaker claimed that he had no desire to step in the ring again, but he can't 100% confirm that it's never gonna happen. He added, just the fact that you asked that question, mission accomplished. You never say never. I don't know of any aspirations of ever stepping into the ring again, but this is the WWE man. You never say never. You just never say never. If Taker does indeed step into the ring again, who would he face? Let us know in the comments down. I don't even know. I said the same thing about Stone Cold, like, yeah, him hanging it up, and boy, was I wrong. That match he had with Kevin Owens was fun at this year's WrestleMania. I don't, I don't know. I legit, I, I'm, I'm very apprehensive. Of him getting back in the ring. Because obviously he he can't move like he used to. I don't I I just don't know. I am okay with what we got with the Boneyard match. I can understand people saying I just want to see him wrestle one more time in front of a crowd. If you're gonna do it, I, I don't know who you have him wrestle. I don't know. I I it to me it has to be someone big enough, an upcoming star big enough where it makes sense. I just don't know. I legit don't know. Comment down below. Let me know who y'all think would be the person that y'all would want to see the Undertaker, Undertaker wrestling in the live audience one more time, if that was to happen. Down below. Next up, The Undertaker addresses his Hall of Fame backlash. Speaking of Taker and his Hall of Fame speech, his speech was well received for the most part. Mm -hmm. However, some fans criticized the dead man for omitting Mick Foley from his speech. Foley was one of The Undertaker's arch rivals, and the two had one of the most famous matches of all time when oh, they collided course. inside the Hell in a Cell at 1998's King of the Ring. Certain fans, and even Foley's own daughter, Noelle, felt like it was disrespectful that The Undertaker couldn't give Foley a passing mention in his speech. But Taker addressed this criticism during his interview with Bleacher Report, and this is what he had to say. I got a little bit of blowback for not mentioning a couple of people, but it wasn't about if I go through every angle, every opponent, it was more about those three pillars I referenced back when I'm talking about Shawn Michaels that mm -hmm. had a direct meaning to never being content. That's why I talk so much about Shawn than Triple H. I did get a little bit of, a, I can't believe you didn't mention Mick Foley. I talked about Mick Foley until I'm blue in the gills. <laughs> I love Mick Foley. <laughs> I think what we did will outlive the test of time as oh, far as our angle. For then sure. I can talk about Edge and so on. I haven't talked about any of those guys. I hope that they don't get their feelings hurt, but it wasn't about all that. It was about my journey and the things I've learned through these 30 plus years that I was trying to share and help people in their lives and thank the WWE Universe. That's what it was all about. If anyone was offended, I'm sorry. A taker clearly meant no harm with his Hall of, of Fame mission, and hopefully this stops the criticism that's been directed towards him for the past few months. What people need to stop doing is trying to tell people how they need to retell their lives. I don't like when people do that. I, I'm without a doubt, of course I know Mick Foley played a big part in The Undertaker's legacy and feud. But he didn't, if he mentioned it, cool. If he didn't, that's fine too. I'm sure they've had conversation and I'm sure it wasn't just something he was like, he had to adamantly go down a list of everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because he had a point that he wanted to get across for himself. This is his retirement. How the hell are you going to tell, you got to mention him, and you got to mention him, and you got to mention, no, he don't have to. But people don't realize, they they talk to each other. I'm sure they've had plenty of conversations all without the cameras on. I'm willing to bet they've had plenty of conversations. All I'm saying is people need to stop trying to 
delegate how someone else should feel about whatever they're going through. I hate that. I hate that. Any of you guys that are doing that or felt that way, like, chill out. It's not your moment. It's his moment. Jesus. Next up, details on Vince McMahon's behavior backstage at SmackDown. Oh, boy. A Friday was another difficult day for Vince McMahon, as the Wall Street Journal published an article yep. that stated that McMahon paid $12 million I in hush about money that. to four different women. The report also claimed that a former talent was coerced into giving McMahon oral sex, and mm -mm. once she resisted further encounters, Vince, you naughty, he naughty boy. Her and was ultimately <laughs> released in 2005. Despite the serious and rather shocking nature of these allegations, McMahon's mood seemed to be the same as ever, at least according to Dave Meltzer. Taken to Twitter, Meltzer would tweet, Just a note from backstage at SmackDown. Business as usual. Yeah. Everyone, especially Vince, acting like nothing happened. Yeah. McMahon's approach to the allegations is rather interesting as, it, as it's almost if he isn't remotely phased or that he wants people to perceive that he's in fear of what to come. McMahon is no longer the active WWE chairman of WWE, and that role is currently in the hands of his daughter Stephanie McMahon. As these allegations are being investigated, it remains unclear what the future holds for Vincent Kennedy McMahon and his overall role in WWE. Vince doesn't give two flying Fs. When Vince came out there a few weeks ago, when the news broke, originally when it was the $3 million supposed hush money, Vince literally came out there to SmackDown just to let people know I'm not going anywhere. Literally, that's what it was. It wasn't no farewell, goodbye. It was, I'm Vince McMahon, and I'm not going anywhere. He didn't say that, but him doing that, which was pointless, just to let everybody know, anyone that's trying to investigate shit, I'm not going anywhere. I'm Vince. So... Now that more things are coming out, do you think he cares? No. He don't care that much, to be honest with you. He's, Vince has always been a guy of, if there's an issue, he'll overcome it. If there's a problem, he's going to find a way to overcome it. He doesn't, he's not really worried about that. So, yeah, Vince is, he's not sweating this shit. He's not sweating at all. Next up, Bianca Belair has her gear stolen. A reigning Raw uh -oh. Women's Champion Bianca Belair has taken to Instagram to reveal that she's had her gear stolen. Specifically, Belair's Raw Survivor Series gear has been stolen and Bianca has asked fans to be aware that it's stolen property if they ever see it on sale online. Belair didn't reveal how her gear was stolen but hopefully it turns up and the talented Belair is reunited with one of the most popular in-ring attires. Next up- It seems like somebody in the back that's back there in the locker room stuff Maybe they was able to get into her locker room, get her gear, and dip on out. So that's that's what it seems like. It don't seem like a random fan can just walk back there and take somebody's gear. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it probably involves somebody that works back there doing something. So, yep, A former WWE champion wants to enter the forbidden door. Kofi Kingston during his extensive run in the WWE has faced a who's who of WWE legends but Kingston revealed that he would be interested in stepping through the forbidden door and possibly mm. facing talent from other promotions. While speaking with Sebastian Hackle for WWE Deutschland, Kingston discussed his desire to step through the forbidden door and the former champion stated, yeah I mean there's a lot, I think more so now. Well you know since Mickey James came to the Rumble right, the quote unquote forbidden door that was never to be talked about was opened. So there's lots of different people from a lot of different promotions that are incredibly talented that I would love to mix it up with and have matches with for sure. The WWE have certainly become more lenient mm -hmm. in using talent from other promotions. It was this month that AEW stars Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson and Paul White appeared on Raw via recorded video, so nothing is off the table. WWE allowing their talent to enter the forbidden door would be an interesting move for sure and would certainly help talent stay motivated as well as bring exposure to other companies. A fine that would be interesting. The fact that Kofi had said that. I don't know. That that would actually kind of be interesting. To see him wrestling in another company. Maybe AEW. Maybe somewhere else. You know. But the one thing <clears throat> that I can respect with certain wrestlers. Especially in WWE and in AEW. A lot of them. Like they're cool with each other. They're, they, they hang out. They're friends. Hmm. Hold on y'all. Hold on. I thought I had to burp, but I didn't. But, you know, they're cool with each other. They hang out. And it's one of those things where it's like, I wish the fans would get that. I see so much on Twitter. I just see it all the time. Twitter and on the YouTube comments. Fans just going back and forth. 
Like it's a real war. Like literally just saying the most heinous stuff to represent WWE or AEW. When the actual wrestlers themselves are cool with each other. Most of them are. And to hear Kofi say, I wouldn't mind, you know, mixing it up with some other people in other companies. That shit lets you know, hey, y'all, chill out. It's not that serious, bro. Like, calm down. If if the wrestlers are cool with each other in different companies, why can't y'all just agree to disagree? Like, I just never understood that. Finally, Rhea Ripley wearing a heart monitor. (coughs) Our final story today looks at the injury status of Rhea Ripley and a worrying Twitter post from the former women's champion. Ripley is currently out of action with a brain injury, and this brain injury is said to be concussion-related, but we're unaware of the timescale of Ripley's return. Fans have grown increasingly concerned for Ripley after she posted a photo on Twitter with the caption, I'm Iron Man. In the photo, Ripley was wearing a heart monitor, which is traditionally worn to track potential irregularities in the heart. Now, we're not aware of Ripley having any established issues with her heart, and we certainly hope that everything is okay. Ripley was initially set to face Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's title match at Money in the Bank. However, due to her injury, she was pulled from the match. There were rumors that WWE may look to rebook the match for SummerSlam, but Ripley has yet to return to WWE television. Yeah. But there you have it, folks. Hey, I, I wouldn't rush it with Rhea Ripley. If they're doing heart monitor stuff and it's brain related, take your time. Don't rush it. <laughs> the, the match is not going anywhere. The company's not going anywhere. Take your time. Anything dealing with the heart and the brain, you definitely have to be careful. And with wrestling, it's, it's it don't take much for things to go terribly wrong. So I don't want her to rush back anytime sooner than she needs to without taking the proper care, getting better, getting healthier. And when she's ready and able to, physically able to, then she should come back. But I'm wishing her a speedy recovery. WWE and AEW has been taking some major major hits with the injury bug the injury bug has no favorites people have been getting hurt left and right and high profile feud so once again this always goes back to you need to make sure they keep building up stars and making sure their roster can step up when someone get hurt someone just replaces them and they keep 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 the ball moving so but comment down below let me know What was probably the most, I guess you could say, shocking news related story from this video? For me, it would probably have to be, I want to say, the whole Undertaker potentially teasing um, him coming back. It's, It's a surprise only because I know, you know, it's the Undertaker is one of those guys where he wants to end it off on a good note. And it's very surprising that he would even kind of keep throwing that out there like you never know you know what i'm saying like that's a surprise and i'm in my opinion i i, I just kind of had that idea once he did the boneyard the little the little boneyard match or whatever you want to call it he was kind of done but to hear that there may be just something that can get him out there one more time that was a very big surprise for me personally so i don't know if it does happen but we will see in the future but appreciate all love and support Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.